now we will discuss the connective tissue cells in uh, proper detail one of the very important cell is mast cells so we'll discuss mast cells into detail <coughs> why i'm discussing mast cells into detail because they are playing a role in many physiological and pathological processes you remember there was one monkey which was very very sensitive whenever tissue is damaged it jumps around and produce lot of products that monkey is called mast cells mast cells is present in all the connective tissue of the body except in central nervous system that brain and the spinal cord does not have mast cells and connective tissue in or all, all rest of the body is very rich in mast cells right now about the mast cells first of all let me tell you how they work i will draw one mast cell here let's suppose okay we start a story that will help you to understand how the mast cells work mast cell play a very very important role in allergic reactions especially in type 1 hypersensitivity reaction you have heard of allergic asthma you heard of that allergic asthma right so the major role is played by the mast cells or have you heard of anaphylactic shock someone was given penicillin and person was sensitive to penicillin and died within few minutes again the major player was mast cells right so in many types of allergic reactions uh, mast cells are the major players so we can take one example that how mast cells work right uh, we can take this boy because he's sitting very near his name is rahil and we see that he is going to develop allergic asthma and we call it asthma or asthma asthma, asthma. okay whatever you call it <laughs> right in my country they call it asthma i think they you call something else anyway you understand in asthma what happened that person who has allergic asthma when he is exposed to the allergens he develop difficulty in breathing. breathing because there is obstruction to the air flow and bronchial tree constrict now what what really happens how a uh, mast cell producer trouble let's start with a very basic concept let's suppose here is mr rahil and he goes to visit a special garden with his uh, girlfriend okay he has a girlfriend so with his girlfriend he goes to a garden and it's a spring season and lot of pollen grains in the air he is in a very flowery mood <laughs> right and he is inhaling pollen grains right now most of us when we inhale the pollen grains our macrophages destroy the pollen grains and don't react to the pollen grains but he is the unfortunate person who is going to develop an allergic asthma to the pollen grains how exactly it happened let me draw you have it i don't know <laughs> right so now you'll know what is really going on in your lungs right let's suppose this is his lung and these are his airways you know airways bronchi break down into smaller bronchial airways right now what i do that let's suppose he has inhaled the pollen grains and pollen grains are coming down these are the pollen <coughs> grains now when pollen grains are going down of course they are not going only in his respiratory system pollen grains are also going to his girlfriend respiratory system as well normally what happen a healthy person when pollen grains or pollen are going in their lungs here they are having special type of macrophages what are these macrophages there are special type of macrophages in respiratory system these are called alveolar macrophages and bronchial macrophages you know what these macrophages are doing here they are all the time patrolling in the respiratory lining and whenever some pollen grain comes or some bacteria come they will phagocytose that and digest that away this is the normal duty of macrophages which are present on the lining of the respiratory system is that right now what happens let's suppose here is this macrophage and here is the pollen grain suppose pollen grain now this is the pollen grain normally what happen that when pollen grains go to your respiratory system macrophage will phagocytose it after phagocytosing this is a phagosome macrophage will 
have special type of granules in which they have destructive enzymes. These granules are called lysosomes. Macrophage normally have lysosomes. What macrophage, ma macrophages do, they catch the pollen grain or bacteria and make a phagosome and then empty these very dangerous type of enzymes into phagosome. So, when these enzymes from lysosomes go into phagosome, they digest away the bacteria or digest away the pollen grains. Let's suppose if this macrophage is in some other person who is not going to develop allergy, it will work in a different way. The pollen has come in. Here is pollen. Here is lysosome. Both of them fuse and take the destructive enzyme here. Destructive enzyme completely destroy pollen grain. For example, proteins of <coughs> proteins of pollen grains will break down into amino acid. Carbohydrates of pollen grain will break down into monosaccharides. So pollen materials are destroyed in most of you. But person who is going to develop allergy, something unfortunate will happen. What is that unfortunate? If you are going to develop allergy against the pollen, then what happens? That you have taken the pollen antigens, right? You don't break it completely. You break it only partially. You only break it partially. And after that, macrophage, unfortunately, fuse a special type of protein molecule with this and present this pollen antigen with a special protein on their surface. This is very sad thing. Normally what should happen? Pollen should be taken by macrophage and completely destroy. But the person who is going to develop allergic reaction, person who is going to develop allergic reaction, what is the unfortunate thing that that person will take the antigen of the pollen, bind it with special type of molecules and express it on the surface. It means this antigen is not completely destroyed. Unfortunately, it is very proudly presented to the immune system that look what we have caught <laughs> and we have taken this antigen with the special molecule. This is called class 2 molecules. MHC class 2 molecule. So with class 2 molecule, this antigen is presented to the other lymphocyte. What happens? Some lymphocyte will have a receptor to recognize the this is a protein on the lymphocyte which can bind with the antigen. Suppose protein component of the pollen. So this protein is called receptor of T cell. When receptor of T cell will bind with what? Pollen antigen and other molecule from this cell, from this lymphocyte will confirm that it is the pollen properly presented with class 2 or not. Again, listen carefully. This is lymphocyte. What is this? Macrophage. Macrophage caught the antigen, processed the antigen with class 2 molecule, presented to the lymphocyte. Lymphocyte recognizes the antigen with its receptor and recognizes that class 2 with special molecule. Right? Now, if lymphocyte recognizes this offer of macrophage, lymphocyte become active. This is T helper cell. I will not go into detail. This T helper cell will produce some product. And those product will stimulate B lymphocyte. They will stimulate, what is the cell? B lymphocyte, T cell helping the B cell. And B cell will become active and they convert into a cell like this. This cell is called plasma cell. This is called plasma cell. Please remember, plasma cell is not in plasma. It has nothing to do with plasma. Plasma cell is a B cell which is activated. What is plasma cell? It is an active active B lymphocyte. So what, what macrophage has done? Macrophage offered the antigen to the T cell. T cell activated the B cell and converted them into plasma cell. Plasma cells start making antibodies. What plasma cells start doing? They start making antipollen antibodies. What are these antibodies? Antipollen antibodies. Now what has happened to Rahel? 
that he is now chained. He is a person who is having anti-pollen antibodies in his body. He is different now most of other people. Right? Now, this anti-pollen antibodies which are produced by the plasma cells, they will go into blood and into local lymph nodes and these antibodies love to stick to the surface of mast cells. This is now point to understand that once his body is having anti-pollen antibodies, if here is a mast cell, this is a mast cell, mast cell has receptors, special protein receptors on its surface. Mast cells have receptors on its surface and on these receptors, what can bind? Anti-pollen antibodies. They only bind, the receptors on the mast cells only bind antibodies belonging to IgE class. So this antibody which is made against the pollen, this belongs to which class of antibodies? IgE class. You will study that in higher classes. So what happens that Rahil has a problem now. That he has super type of macrophages which did not destroy the pollen. They rather process the pollen and present it to the T helper cell which activated B cells, converted them into plasma cell and made anti-pollen antibodies of IgE class. Now anti-pollen antibodies will bind to his mast cell. Now mast cells are loaded with anti-pollen IgE. But up to now, there is no allergic reaction. Up to now, there is no problem. It was his first exposure to that pollen. It was his first lifetime, first exposure to that pollen. All this process, taking the pollen, presenting antigen to T cells, and T cells stimulating the B cell, and plasma cell, and antibody <laughs> formation, and then loading the mast cell take about two weeks. It, it whole process take about two weeks. After two weeks, he is in a very, very dangerous situation. Why? Because in his lungs, under the epithelium of bronchial system, let's suppose I make a very large bronchial. These are what cells? Suppose epithelial cells. Under it, here are the connective tissue and mast cells. What are these cells? Mast cells. These mast cells are loaded with anti-pollen IgE. Is that right? These mast cells are like loaded guns. And when they will trigger? When next time again pollen will come. Because next time, when again pollen antigen comes, it, these cells are having anti-pollen IgE. And pollen will bind here. Now look here. Here is pollen antigen with bind here and here and pollen antigens will cross link IgE on the surface of mast cells and this will activate the antibodies and when active antibodies tail are activated when antibody bind with the pollen antibodies are activated they activate receptors receptors give signal to the cell receptors these receptors give signals signals are at three level they activate the cell membrane, they activate the cytosol, and they activate the nucleus. I see how mast cells are going to produce troubles in his life. That when allergic substance came again, he was a person who was having mast cell loaded with the anti-pollen IgEs. As soon as allergic substance came, within few minutes it activates the mast cells. And this receptor gives signal to the membranes, they give signal to the cytoplasm, they give signal to the nucleus. And after these signals, what will happen? In the cell membrane, there is an enzyme called phospholipase A2. This enzyme is activated. You know what it will do? It will break down the lipids of its own cell membrane. Imagine a woman who is very angry and irritated. She keep on pulling her own hair. And start throwing it away. 
mast cell behave like that when it is irritated activated it break down its own lipids from its own membrane and throw away the pieces of its lipids so what will happen if membrane is stimulated membrane enzymes are stimulated they break down the lipids in the membrane and those lipids break down into two types of product prostaglandins and leukotrienes have you heard of them prostaglandins are coming from the cell membrane leukotrienes are also coming from cell membranes so what will happen that in this area lot of prostaglandins are released and leukotrienes are released now these were connective tissue cells which are activated from their membranes prostaglandins and leukotrienes are released what these prostaglandins will do prostaglandins will dilate the blood vessels blood vessels in the this area will open up blood flow will be less or more more let me now draw a section of bronchial system i open a bronch let's suppose this is the airway air should be here right here are his epithelial cells mucosa isn't it bronchial mucosa under it he has some connective tissue in which there are what are these yeah blood vessels right here are some bronchial what are these glands they can produce secretions am i clear you see how the real trouble start due to activity of mast cells these are smooth muscles around it bronchial smooth muscle and this is the whole bronchial system you know it's a section here is your nasty mast cell when this mast cell is activated it is releasing prostaglandins and leukotrienes now what happened prostaglandin open the blood vessel so blood flow in this area will become less or more more when blood flow is more fluid in this area will become more and tissue will swell up when this tissue will swell up it will swell inward so air flow will become more or less yeah so number one mucosal edema what is happening mucosal edema this is problem number one problem number 2 these are the leukotrienes leukotrienes act on endothelial cells and shrink them you know these are endothelial cells like this when leukotrienes work on them they become like shrunken they shrink and there are gaps made so more fluid coming out of vessel tissue will more swell up number 1 blood vessels open number 2 the cells which are making a lining of capillaries those cells shrink and gaps develop and fluid will come out more swelling of all this tissue is that right then meanwhile another trouble will start from the what is this granule in the mast cell these are preformed chemical substances in this these are called primary mediators of allergy this as soon as cytosol is stimulated these product also come <coughs> out what are these product histamine have you heard of it and there are eosinophil chemotactic factor neutrophil chemotactic factor histamine is released then some substances are released which will attract the eosinophils some substances are released which will attract the neutrophils it means this is a monkey which is producing some attractive substances so that eosinophils jump into tissue so that neutrophils jump into tissue it is calling more monkeys into this area you know blood is passing through this area it was having white blood cells mast cell is here it has produced the product here which will attract the eosinophils out and neutrophils out it's a good news bad news bad news because eosinophil will come and damage the tissue neutrophil will come also damage the tissue these are not decent monkeys when they come out into tissue they start fighting and produce dangerous substances is that right 
then histamine this is histamine you know what it is doing it will dilate the artery further plus histamine will shrink these cells further all this is good for him or bad for him bad for him is that right at the top histamine has a receptor on these bronchial smooth muscles the bronchial smooth muscle will constrict when all of them will constrict it will become narrow so what is happening the dangerous product from very moody type of monkey mast cell it is stimulated when allergic substance bind with the ige on the mast cell ige activate membrane membrane produce prostaglandins and leukotrienes prostaglandin produce increase blood flow and increase permeability plus prostaglandins also produce bronchoconstriction constricted leukotrienes also increase permeability by shrinking the cell plus leukotrienes also constrict these cells prostaglandins stimulate the gland to produce more secretions now look at it so sad more secretions coming here lumen is blocking all tissue getting swelling lumen is reducing the smooth muscle contracting lumen is further reducing airway is becoming narrow how many things are opening the blood vessels histamine is opening the increasing blood flow as well as prostaglandin increasing blood flow how many things shrinking these cells endothelial cells and increase the permeability prostaglandin and histamines then how many cells things which are stimulating what is this bronchial smooth muscle prostaglandins constrict them histamine constrict them leukotrienes also constrict them is a good news or bad news for him is bad news then gland also start working more so more secretions here number 1 more edema and swelling here more constriction here right and still mast cell is not satisfied so after a little more time its nuclear machine will become active and nuclear machinery will make messenger rna which will translate into proteins and new proteins will come out here interleukin 1 and tumor necrosis factor they will also increase the inflammatory processes here at the top from these granules destructive proteins will come out they are called proteases what are these called proteases they will destroy some tissue here so what is happening in his lung you know it's all monkey business right that mast cells are irritated and they produce the product from the membrane prostaglandins and leukotrienes they produce the product which are already stored in granules histamine eosinophilic chemotactic factor neutrophilic chemotactic factor and proteases <coughs> because they are already preformed they are already preformed these are called primary mediators what are these called primary mediators meanwhile membrane products are coming as well as from nucleus nuclear activation orders the cell to produce more dangerous proteins interleukin 1 and tumor necrotic factors because these are synthesized later on so these two are called secondary mediators again mast cell produce primary mediators and also produce secondary mediators what are primary mediators primary mediators are those substances which are already present in the mast cell before activation these are ready made preformed if someone come to your home and you offer the cake which you did not eat yourself it is a primary presentation and then you cook something and offer what is that secondary presentation mast cell is also like this it has pre formed materials primary mediators and it can synthesize new things and release these are secondary mediators all primary and secondary mediators which are produced by the mast cell in the bronchial system they produce swelling of the mucosa they produce increase glandular secretion and they produce bronchoconstriction so its bronchial airways will become wide or narrow narrow so can he breathe well so he will find difficulty in breathing so we say he has dyspnea dyspnea is difficulty in breathing with that his airways will become little bit narrow so they start behave like small whistles you know whistle for example this is a pipe and if you make a little narrow at one point it may start whistling 
because when it is narrow air will pass through become turbulent and may approach the sound of speed of sound so now normally when he is breathing there is no whistling sound but because many many areas in his lungs mast cells are activated and bronchial constrictions occur in multiple area as if nature has produced or mast cells have produced many many whistles in his airways and you will, you will hear whistling sounds from his chest that is called wheezing that is called wheezing so this was one example that how important are mast cells in their function and how do they work now let me tell you another example where are mast cells specially concentrated in your body listen mast cells are specially concentrated under all epithelia you know under the epithelia there is connective tissue so all the connective tissue which is just under the epithelium is very rich in mast cells plus all the blood vessels small blood vessels outside the blood vessels mast cells are well concentrated now let me tell you a more dangerous example what happens to mast cells imagine if i'm having allergy to penicillin if i'm allergic to penicillin and against the penicillin i have made ige if i have made ige antibody against the penicillin then my all the mast cells in my body are loaded with anti penicillin ige again listen unfortunately i am a person who is allergic to penicillin why am i am allergic to allergic to penicillin because unfortunately i have made ige antibodies against penicillin now this ige antibodies which i have made against the penicillin they will load all my mast cells in the body is that right now one day i go to hospital and there is a young doctor there very enthusiastic and he does not he want to give me penicillin but does not check the allergy allergic reaction he directly give me intravenous penicillin what will happen penicillin will spread all over the my body and it will go to every mast cell and mast cells are loaded with anti penicillin ige all my mast cells become active all over the body and they start releasing membrane products they start releasing the product from the lysos uh, their granules mast cell granules they start releasing product from their nuclei now you see what will happen all my clinical problem will be according to the tissue in which mast cells are activated now in this classical example you have injected the anti, uh, antigen or penicillin into my blood so it will go all over the body penicillin will spread all my body so all mast cells are activated now see what will happen number 1 all the mast cells under the skin will release histamine and their product so skin will swell up you are getting it i will develop swellings and redness in the skin we call it rashes i will develop multiple rashes due to allergy to penicillin this is not a big deal the real real problem is the those mast cells which are around my blood vessels they will pre produce lot of histamine all my blood vessels in the body will dilate and you know what will happen let me tell you this is my heart and this is my circulatory system heart is the pump which is moving the blood how much is the capacity of circulatory system anyone what is the capacity of circulatory system 5 liter and what is the volume of blood 5 liter it means in a normal person capacity of circulatory system is 5 liter and volume filled is 5 liter it means circulatory system is full is it right so when heart pump in this direction of course something come back clear and it keep on circulating now you imagine mast cell that fired these are the mast cells they produce histamine all my blood vessels dilate my blood is still 5 liter but capacity becomes suppose 10 liter so blood will settle into the will it go back so heart will not get the blood and its cardiac output will drop and my blood pressure will drop and i will go into shock circulatory shock it's so simple mast cells are so dangerous because all the blood vessels are having lot of these nasty monkeys around them what are these monkeys mast cells they are very irritable monkeys and when you gave me penicillin penicillin touch these mast cells where 
on IgE loaded on the mast cells. All the mast cells around my blood vessels release their product like histamine and prostaglandins and others. These products dilate my blood vessels. Blood vessels increase their capacity. When they increase the capacity, volume is now normal but capacity is too much. This difference between the volume and capacity drops the pressure and I go into circulatory shock. While I'm going to circulatory shock and my skin has developed rashes, mass cells in my lungs will also degranulate. And what will happen? Breathing difficulties. Now I'm a man, after the injection, I develop rashes, my blood pressure is going down, I find it difficult to breathe, and I develop abdominal cramps. Why? In the GIT mucosa lining, there are a lot of mass cells. They also fire. And you know, GIT motility become disturbed and I develop pain in abdomen. So what is happening? Before death, what are my problems? Just before death. <laughs> Difficulty in breathing, rashes on the skin, abdominal pain, and then blood pressure goes down and then I pass away. Is that right? This is called anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock. Why well, I'm teaching you this thing in detail because these are clinically relevant and important. It's better not to irritate mast cells. <laughs> but the question is that, why nature, nature put the mast cells there? Nature is a master creator. There must be some good thing. Yes, there is. Nature has put mast cell not for allergic reactions. Not for allergic reactions. Nature has put these monkeys that whenever you damage the tissue, mast cell produce product, open up the nearby vessels, Call the neutrophil and sinophils, right? So that whatever is damaging the tissue, for example, bacteria, they should be eaten up. Actually, mast cells are there with all good intentions. That whenever tissue is damaged, they are very sensitive. I just give you example, mast cell can be stimulated when IgE is activated. But mast cell can be stimulated by any type of injury. I told you mast cell can be stimulated by thermal injury, by mechanical injury, by microbiological injury, by chemical injury, any type of injury to the tissue will activate mast cells. Usually it is a good thing because whenever you, for example, some bacteria enter in my skin, bacteria damaging, local mast cell will be activated. Local blood flow should increase. More white blood cells should come there and mast cell produce chemotactic factor. The white blood cell come into tissue and eat up the bacteria. So normally they are good. But sometimes, unfortunately, when we make IgE antibody against common substances, then mast cell become loaded with IgE and then they react against the allergic substance. That is a problem for us. Have you heard some people have allergic rhinitis or allergic conjunctivitis? Okay, some people, you know, for example, one person goes to the garden and he develops red eyes. Another friend goes to the garden, he develops red nose. Another goes and he develops allergic asthma. All of them have problem with the mast cell, which are loaded with antipollen IgE. The only difference is, the first person has a mast cell loaded with IgE in conjunctiva. Second person has mast cell loaded with IgE in the nasal mucosa. Third person has mast cell loaded with the IgE in the bronchial tray. What does it mean? It means that if mast cells are irritated in conjunctiva, you will develop conjunct allergic conjunctivitis. If mast cells are activated in the nasal mucosa and pharyngeal mucosa, you will develop allergic rhinitis. That is also called hay fever. And if you have mast cell loaded with IgE in the bronchial tray, you will develop asthma. And if you have mast cells loaded with IgE all over the body, and then you give allergic substance into the blood, person will develop anaphylactic shock. Another classical example of anaphylactic shock is by insect bite. Have you heard of it? If some people by simple insect bite simply die. Why? Yeah, because simple bee sting or some other. For example, we also get by sting by the bee, but maybe we get little bit problem and then things become okay. But some unfortunate people take the venom Venom of the bee sting, process in the macrophage, proudly present to T helper cell, and they activate the B cell, and person has 
IgE against the B strain, B venom. Now this person, <coughs> when the next time beautiful B will visit and sting, his mast cell in the body will be activated. And if, they, if these mast cells are activated under the skin, he will develop only rashes. But if they are activated all over the body, he will develop anaphylactic shock. Yeah, if you have to develop anaphylactic shock, then an allergic substance should go into general circulation all over the body. You have a question? How do some people also like, huh? when they're little, they have it, and when they get old, they kind of die? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. She says that uh, uh, as uh, children grow, they grow out of asthma most of the time. The reason being, they say that bronchial system become less reactive to the product of mast cells. For example, in childhood, there are more receptors of bronchial for more receptors for leukotriene on the smooth muscle. As you grow up, receptor become less. So you are less reactive to the products. So you grow out of asthma. Is that right? It does not mean that as you grow, pollen disappear from the world. <laughs> it simply means your own tissue has become less reactive. Thank God. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Is there a way to somehow remove the IgEs? From the yeah, there are many ways to manage these allergies. We will discuss in senior classes for sure.